Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Shizune. Part 2. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. 6 months later. Naruto, Haku, and Shizune walked out of the compound as they got ready to meet with Anko and Kiba for an announcement. As they walked through the town, they ignored the hateful glares that they got from people. I wonder what the announcement is, Haku said to them. Shizune wondered also. She hadn't been to this part of Naruto's life, but he was more than happy to tell them. The Chunin exams are about to start soon, Naruto told them. Both nodded their heads in realization. Oh that's right, I remember that I had to take one also, Shizune said to them. Haku nodded. She knew about the exams, she had gone through them before, but was a spy for Zabuza, so she didn't care about her rank. Well ladies let's hurry up, Anko-sensei hates lateness, Naruto said to them. Both women nodded. Yes Naruto Koi, they said as they ran off to the forest. 45 minutes later. Everyone came up to see Kiba laying at the gate. Kiba looked up to see his three teammates coming up to the gate. Well it seems that everyone is here, he said to them. Everyone nodded as they sat down and waited for Anko. As everyone waited, Haku put her head on Naruto's lap as Shizune put her head on his shoulder. Both girls fell asleep with peaceful dreams about their blonde. Naruto chuckled as he looked at his precious women on his body. Kiba had a side glance at Naruto and smiled. Kiba muttered the words lucky dog under his breath. As the two guys waited for Anko, they both decided to take a nap also. 25 minutes later. Anko showed up at the forest entrance with a bag full of dango. She had her trademark toothpick in her mouth as she looked around for her students. She saw three four figures at the entrance. Soon Anko saw that it was her students, Anko got a gleam in her eyes. They are so peaceful when they are asleep, she said to herself. She looked to see Kiba and Akamaru sleeping while they laid on the gate. She turned to see an amazing sight. She saw her blonde Gaki with two girls sleeping on his body. Anko had a slight bit of jealousy. She suddenly smirked as she realized a good idea. Anko smiled as she laid on another side of Naruto and fell asleep on the adjacent side of Shizune. Anko soon fell asleep as she felt the muscular muscles on her head. I have to admit it Naruto, you know how to make a woman jealous, Anko said as she fell asleep. Everyone was soon having good dreams as the day went by. Two hours later. Kiba and Akamaru woke up and stretched. He looked around to see that Anko wasn't here yet. Kiba sighed as he got a glance at Naruto. Kiba stuttered at what he saw. He saw Anko sleeping on Naruto's shoulder. Kiba quickly got up and walked over to the group. Everyone, please wake up. Kiba yelled. Everyone startled awake as they turned to see Anko on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto blushed. Am I that good of a pillow? He asked them. Haku and Shizune nodded. I don't blame her, you really are comfortable to sleep on, Shizune said to Naruto. Naruto smiled. Yeah I guess, Naruto said to them. Naruto formed an idea. He leaned to Anko and kissed her cheek. Anko-sensei wake up my snake mistress, Naruto cooed to her. Anko squirmed awake. She rubbed her eyes and saw her face dangerously close to Naruto's. Anko looked around at the smiling Jenin who had seen her on Naruto's shoulder. Anko blushed as she backed away. I it's not what you think I I was just, Anko paused as Haku continued. You were just sleeping soundly on Narukun's shoulder, Haku said with a smile. Anko blushed as she stumbled to her feet. She got up and coughed into her hand. It wasn't like that I just, Anko stopped as she looked down. Just thought that I could receive love like that also, Anko said with a frown. Everyone stopped smiling as they looked at their sensei. No one had seen this side of her before. Naruto in the past hadn't spent much time with Anko, so he didn't know how she felt. Naruto smiled as he got up. He looked to his right at Shizune. Shizune looked at him and sighed. She formed a smile and nodded. Naruto nodded and turned to Haku. Haku looked at Naruto. She had been out with Naruto for a few months so she knew how he felt about things like this. She had come to love that side of him. The side with so much love for others. Haku hadn't done anything past intense kissing with Naruto, as she was afraid to take the next step with him. In truth, she didn't mind sharing either, since Shizune had shared Naruto with her. Haku smiled as she nodded. Naruto nodded as he stepped forward. He put his hands on the sad Anko's face as she looked up at him. Naruto smiled as he wiped a few tears off her eyes. He then, much to her surprise, kissed her cheek as she blushed a beet red. Naruto stopped as he looked at her. Anko-sensei, would you give me the honor of taking you on a date sometime? Naruto asked her. Anko looked up in a hopeful smile. She wouldn't mind, but she turned to Naruto. You know I am half your age right? She asked. Naruto smiled he turned to Shizune. She nodded as he looked back at her. Naruto decided it was time to tell her and Kiba his plan. He looked at Anko. Not necessarily Anko, Naruto said to her. Anko looked at him in confusion as he stepped back. Naruto did a hand sign. 
Aye, he said as smoke enveloped him. Anko and Kiba stared as they saw a 13-year-old boy replaced with a 20-year-old man. Anko stepped back as she took in his form. His whiskers were more visible, his body was more toned, his ears were on top of his head, and he had a tail that swayed slightly. Kiba looked at his teammate in awe. Awesome Naruto, how did you become like that? Kiba asked interested. Naruto smiled. He saw Anko still in shock as he snapped her out of it. So Anko-sensei, how do you like the real me? Naruto asked her. Anko looked over his body. Everything about him was godlike. Anko went back to staring as she looked at him. He is perfect, the body, the face, the cute tail, the muscles, oh the muscles they all make him so hot, Anko thought to herself. Naruto snapped her out of her thoughts again. Anko-sensei, Kiba there is something I must tell you, Naruto told them. Everyone sat down as they listened. Shizune decided that since this would be revealed anyway, she released her hinge also. Her features were the same as Naruto's, except she had a more voluptuous body, she had a crimson tail also. Her face had its own whiskers also. Other than that, she seemed basically the same. Naruto sighed as he went over his thoughts. Anko and Kiba waited for Naruto to gather his thoughts. Naruto took a deep breath and started. It all started on one very hateful night, Naruto said to them. Both listened as Naruto's story shocked them to the core. Naruto told them how Sasuke would be the Roku Daime Hokage. How he would drive Konoha to war against the other four nations. Naruto also told him how Sasuke would kill all the ninja who side with Naruto. Naruto told Anko how she died at the hands on a mind-controlled Kurinai, and how Kiba would die from being taken captive by one of the nations, as Sasuke abandoned him and left him to die. Naruto went along to say how he and Shizune were captured or tortured. He told them how Sasuke killed their daughter in front of their eyes, and how the village would revel in the deaths of Naruto's friends and his daughter. Naruto explained his plan of destroying Konoha to them, as he went over how he would want their help in its destruction. Naruto finished as he gauged their reactions. Anko was in tears, and Kiba was close to the verge of losing it. Naruto grabbed Shizune and Haku and held them close. I won't forgive them, I will make this place pay for its crimes, Naruto said to them. Kiba slammed his hands on the ground. What, I am killed because I was abandoned by my village, and they didn't even care, Kiba said to Naruto. Naruto nodded. Kiba looked down in disgust. Anko wasn't having the best time either. I get killed by Nai-chan, Anko thought as tears ran down her face. Naruto nodded. I am sorry to say that to you, but it is the truth, Naruto told them. Kiba looked at the ground. He seemed to convince himself of something and smiled. He looked up at Naruto. No way am I dying because I fought for an arrogant, let me join you Naruto, if this is how the village will be in the future, then it deserves to be destroyed, Kiba said to him. Naruto smiled. He grabbed Kiba's hand and shook it. You're always welcome Kiba, I would be honored to have you, Naruto said with a smile. Kiba nodded. It's all good Naruto, I am not dying for Sasuke of all people, Kiba said to him Naruto nodded and smiled. Naruto turned to Anko who was on the ground. Naruto looked at her. Anko if it's any consolation, Kurinai didn't kill you because she wanted to, she was being controlled by Sasuke, Naruto told her. Anko's formed a slight smile. She was happy that Kurinai would kill her intentionally. Anko sighed as she got up. Snake, she said to them. Everyone looked at her in confusion. Huh? Kiba asked. Anko looked at him. Ever since I was eight, I was called Snake Girl, Snake, Snake by all people, no one ever respected me for me, they only saw the insane student of Orochimaru, they didn't care about me or anything, I am not dying for ungrateful like that. Naruto I would like to join also, as you follower and maybe as something else, Anko said with a blush. Naruto blushed and nodded. I will love Anko-chan for herself, I will accept you when no one will, I am honored to have you by my side Anko-sensei, Naruto told her. Anko cried a little as she pounced on Naruto and kissed his cheek. Thank you very much, Naruto-kun, she said to him. Naruto nodded. Well then Anko-chan when would you like to go on our date? Naruto asked her. Anko sat up and thought. After the Chunin exams, she told him. Naruto nodded. Kiba looked confused. Chunin exams? He asked. Anko looked at him and straightened up. That's right Kiba, I nominated you all for the Chunin exams, so go kick some shinobi ass, even if it is a Konoha shinobi, Anko said to them. Everyone nodded. Naruto held up a head though. Anko, Kiba, I have to tell you guys that there are people I wish to save in this village, Naruto told them. Anko and Kiba nodded. They wanted to save the few good people who were in Konoha. Naruto nodded as he faced them. Well Anko, since you are now in our group, would you like to come live with me, Shizune, Haku, and Zabuza? Naruto asked. Anko looked at him. In an apartment? She asked. Naruto laughed. No no in my compound, I know who my parents are, and I found their house in the woods, it is very large enough to fit one massive family, Naruto told her. Anko smiled. 
Thank you Naruto-kun, I will take you up on that offer, Anko said to him. Kiba wanted to stay with his parents. He said he would try to convince his family to back up Naruto in his cause. Naruto nodded, but told Kiba to be discreet. He didn't want people getting wind of this, especially Danzo. Anko announced to the group that their exams would be tomorrow. Everyone nodded as they went home. Anko went home and started to pack and seal her things to go and live with Naruto. Anko had the happiest smile on her face as she waited to go to his compound. 45 minutes later. Anko brought her stuff to the compound as she marveled at the sheer size of it. Wow Naruto-kun, wasn't kidding this place is great, definitely big enough for a very large family, Anko said as she caught herself. A family, she thought. Anko smiled at the thought of her little blondes running around the garden area. Naruto opened the compound to see Anko at the entrance. Welcome Anko-chan, Naruto told her. Anko stepped inside the house. This is a nice place Naruto-kun, Anko said to him. Naruto smiled. Thank you Anko-chan, the rooms are upstairs, pick anyone you want, Naruto told her. Anko nodded as she went upstairs to unpack. Everyone decided to take it easy for the exams tomorrow. Naruto sat in his room, thinking of who to recruit next. But Sasuke. Sasuke was thinking over the exams that would take place tomorrow. He knew that he would get very far in the exams because of his Ichiha status. Sasuke still kept thinking of how he couldn't get the Dobes girl for himself. It frustrated him to no end that such power was in the hands of a dead last and not himself. Sasuke managed to activate it as Sharingan from the rage he felt after the meeting. He was overjoyed to have his full power. Sasuke began to step up his training in order to control his new Dejutsu. Sasuke still had his obsessive fangirls all over him, but he felt they weren't worth his time. Well do oh, if you think you can beat me now, then you are in for a rude awakening, Sasuke said to himself. He walked off to do more training. With Kakashi. Kakashi was sitting on a bench reading his Icha Icha book, but in actuality he was thinking. I have no doubt that Sasuke can beat Naruto now, that he has the Sharingan, but I wonder how strong Naruto is, Kakashi wondered. Suddenly his reading was interrupted by Kurenai. Still reading Smut Kakashi? She asked. Kakashi looked up to see the game Jutsu mistress in front of him. It's not Smut, it's art, he said to her. Kurenai shrugged her shoulders. Whatever Kakashi, but just out of curiosity who do you think is stronger Naruto or Sasuke? Kurenai asked out of the blue. Why do you want to know? Kakashi asked. Kurenai looked at him. I hear people want to see a rematch of Naruto vs Sasuke from their time in the academy, Kurenai said to him. Kakashi sweat dropped. How can people still remember that? He wondered. Kakashi decided to answer. In all honesty, I think Sasuke could beat Naruto any day, Kakashi said to her. Kurenai nodded her head. All right then I will root for Naruto, Kurenai said to him. Kakashi looked up from his book. Why? He asked. Kurenai smiled. I don't know, something about him makes me want to cheer for him, maybe I like cheering for the underdog, Kurenai said to Kakashi. He nodded his head as Kurenai got up to leave. Well later Kakashi, Kurenai said to him. Kakashi waved goodbye. Well this will be interesting, he said as he continued on to his book. Everyone was ready for the exams tomorrow. Next morning. Naruto, Shizune, and Haku got up and were ready to have some fun today. Well well today is the start of the Chunin exams, Naruto said to himself. He got up and got dressed. Shizune and Haku also got dressed as everyone went downstairs. Will you watch us Zabuza-sama? Haku asked. Zabuza nodded. I crave the entertainment, mop the floor with Umgaki, Zabuza said to Naruto. Naruto nodded. Don't worry, he will, I have faith in our leader, Anko said making her presence known. Well Gaki, let's go, now is the time to have fun, she said to them. Everyone nodded as they left for the exams. Exam hall. Naruto, Shizune, and Haku met up with Kiba as the everyone walked inside. As they walked inside they came up to the door that said 301. Naruto looked to see a group of genin all surrounding the door. Soon they saw people get pushed away from the door. Please we need to pass, they said. Yeah right, back away now, you will die if you continue, said a kid. Naruto smiled as he motioned his group forward on up the stairs. The two jonin in disguise smirked. Looks like someone has some sense, one of them said to the other. No kidding, the other said. Both looked to see the famed Ichiha in the crowd. Drop the game Jutsu, this is the second floor, we still need to go a floor up, Sasuke said proudly. Everyone nodded in understanding. They all finally realized it. One of the jonin laughed. Then maybe you should follow that group of four, as they seem to have more brains than the majority of you all, on of them said as H pointed to Naruto's group. Sasuke seethed at the thought that Naruto had figured out the game Jutsu trick before him. Naruto shook his head. 
Great job Sasuke, that was to eliminate groups who could figure it out, you just made this exam harder for yourself, next time keep your mouth shut, Naruto said as Shizune, Haku, and Kiba nodded and walked off. Sasuke snarled as he walked upstairs. Bam dobe, he said to himself. A guy with a gourd on his back was intrigued by the blonde. Finally a person who can prove my existence, unlike this piece of shit Ichiha, Gara said to himself. With Naruto and his group. Everyone walked up to the door to see Anko waiting for them. Well Gaki, good luck, kiss him ass, especially Kanoha's ass, Anko said with a smile. Everyone nodded. Naruto opened the door and everyone stepped inside. Everyone was immediately shot waves of Kai as they came into the room. Kiba could wince at it, but Naruto told Kiba to calm down. Kiba did as Naruto shot up his Kai as it washed over the participants who could sweat from the power they felt. Soon the other rookie nine came to see them. Yo Naruto have you been? Shikamaru asked. Naruto smiled. Hey Shika, been good, it seems you were nominated also, Naruto said to him. Shikamaru nodded. Well things will get troublesome from now on, he said to him. Naruto nodded. Soon the room bursted with cheers as Sasuke came into the room. Naruto sighed. And there is the very definition of troublesome, Naruto said to him. Shikamaru nodded. No kidding, he said which earned him a slap on the head from Ino. Don't badmouth Sasuke-kun, she ordered. Shizune sighed. He is a loser anyway, so I don't think it matters, she said to her. Hinata and Shino went to meet Naruto and his group. Um hello Naruto-kun, Hinata said to him. Naruto nodded. Hello Hinata-chan, Naruto said to her. Soon a guy with glasses came up to them. Well it seems we have some new people here, he said to them. Naruto's smile faded, here was one of the people who helped the team kill his daughter. Naruto calmed down, but it was nearly impossible as he wanted to murder the guy. I have info cards on everyone here is there anyone you want to know about? He asked. Sasuke got interested. I do, I want to see, Sabaku no Gara, Rock Lee, and Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke said, surprising everyone that he wanted information on the dead last. Oh you know their names, that's no fun, he said as he picked out a card. Sabaku no Gara had 0 D ranks, 4 C ranks, 2 B ranks, 5 A ranks, and 1 S rank. His teammates are Sabaku no Tamari and Sabaku no Kankuro. It is said that in every mission he has gotten away from without a scratch, Kabuto said to them. Everyone looked worried. Sound strong, Shino said. I guess so Kabuto said to him. He pulled out another card. Rock Lee, teammates. Niji Huga, Tenten Karami, 25 D rank missions, 2 C ranks, he is a Tijutsu expert. He has no ninjutsu or gained jutsu skills, but he is considered the second best person at tojutsu, Kabuto explained. He pulled out the last card. Lastly Naruto Yuzu. Naruto grabbed the card. He looked at all the information. He smiled as he tore the card to bits. He then threw it in the trash. You people don't need to know about what I do, Naruto told them. Everyone complained, but he made them all shut up. Soon after, the proctor came through the door. Everyone sit down and shut you asses up, I am Ibiki your proctor and welcome to the gates of hell, he said to them. Exam hall. Naruto and the others engaged in casual conversation until they were greeted by a gruff looking man with a bandana over his head. Alright sit down and shut the hell up, I am Ibiki your proctor and welcome to the gates of hell, he said to the group of people. Everyone seemed intimidated by the man, except Naruto and his group. Naruto had told them about the way the Chunin exams went without leaving a detail. As everyone took their seats, Ibiki began his torture. Alright, here is how things go, you have all be privileged to join the Chunin exams, know that things will get hectic for you. This test is a written test. I will make a few rules clear. 1. There is no cheating whatsoever, if you are caught cheating 5 times you and your teammates will be sent out of the room, Ibiki explained. How the hell is that fair? One person said to Ibiki. Shut the hell up, nothing in life is fair, you are just unlucky to have me for a proctor, in the last 10 minutes of the exam you will be given a 10th question, I suggest you try to stay alive till then, the test starts when I say start, Ibiki said to them. Naruto and his group put their heads on the desk and fell asleep as were Naruto's instructions. Everyone waited for 10 minutes for Ibiki to say start, but he didn't. Are you going to say start anytime soon? Kankuro asked. Ibiki smiled at him. I did, that last sentence was the signal to start, Ibiki said to them. Everyone gasped as they started to answer. Ibiki and his group started to pick out weaklings unlucky enough to get caught. Number 47 fails, numbers 12 and 26 fail, Ibiki said to them. The group got up and left. Five more groups of people got disqualified as they walked out. Soon it came down to the final 10 minutes as Naruto and his group started to wake up. Ibiki narrowed his eyes at Naruto. You have a nice nap Gaki? Ibiki asked. Naruto smiled. It was rather pleasant, Naruto told him Ibiki smirked. Ibiki turned serious as he looked at everyone in the room. 
All right, here is your 10th question, but before I ask it, I want to know if you want to take this question, Hibiki said to them. Ino stood up. What happens if we don't take the question? She asked. Hibiki looked at her. Well of course you fail, and your previous points won't help you either, Hibiki said to them. Ino grew a vein on her head. Then we aren't stupid enough to not answer it, she said to him. Hibiki smiled. However should you answer this wrong, you will be genin for the rest of your lives, can you take that risk? He asked. Everyone wavered a little, except Naruto and his group. More than half the students quit as they walked out. Naruto sighed. He stood up and looked at everyone in disgust. Okami, you are all pathetic, you all have no balls, how can you be a chunin if you aren't willing to take risks, man the fact that some of you gave up without attempting it is appalling, you are a disgrace to your village, if you think I am wrong, then put your fucking hands down and wait for the damn question, Naruto said as he sat back down. Everyone stared at the blonde in awe. No one had spoken with such confidence before in their lives. Everyone smiled as they put their hands down. Even his group had their own thoughts about his speech. Oh Naruto-kun, the way you talk down to these insects makes me so hot, Shizune said in her thought. Naru-kun sure knows how to take control of a situation, Haku said to herself. Just what I would expect of you, Naruto my leader, Kiba said with a smirk. Sasuke smirked, Ino nodded in agreement with Naruto for once. Hinata blushed at his intensity, Shino came to respect him. Shikamaru smiled and nodded. Everyone gave approving grins as they all got the balls to answer Ibiki's question. It seems that Gaki has convinced everyone to stay, I guess my torture is over, Ibiki said as he clapped his hands. A job, everyone passes, Ibiki told them. Everyone looked confused. What about the tenth question? Tamari asked. Ibiki smiled. There is no tenth question, this was all to see how you could gather information. As a shinobi, you won't always have the luxury of selecting your missions, there will be missions where your life is on the line, you must be willing to take risks, those who would rather opt out of a mission to fight another day will not be called shinobi, not as long as I am here, but you all passed good job. He said to them. Everyone was happy to have passed, except Naruto's group. Oh please, you people can't even handle that much. Naruto said to himself. Soon a banner came out of the window, and Kunai stuck it to the roof with a purple-haired woman coming out of the banner. Naruto and his team put their heads down in embarrassment at their sensei. Alright Gaki, I am Anko Midarashi, I am your proctor for the second exam, follow me, she said with her hand in the air. Everyone sweat dropped as Ibiki came from behind the banner. You still get here too early, he said to her. Anko sighed as she looked at the students. She smiled as she saw her students there. Ah would Ibiki 54 people passed. You are losing your touch, Anko said to him. Ibiki sighed. Or we have a strong batch here, he said to her. Anko smiled. Oh well, when I am done, less than half of this group will be dead, she said to them. Everyone gulped as they saw her head to the window. Alright Gaki, follow me to training ground number 44, all those late will be failed, Anko said as she ran out the window. Naruto smiled as he got up. His team followed his lead and headed for the window. He turned back to the group of still startled young shinobi. Well what are you people waiting for? Get your ass in gear, Naruto told them as he and his team jumped out the window. Everyone ran after them as Ibiki picked up the papers. He looked to see something scribbled on on paper. Hey Ibiki, there is a spy in our group, that spy is an examinee named Kabuto, he is a spy for Orochimaru, oh, and speaking of the snake, he is here also, he plans to wage war on Konoha, just thought I should tell you, later, said the note. Ibiki smiled. Thank you for the info Gaki, Ibiki said as he shunshined to the Hokage's office. Hokage Mansion. Ibiki came into the office to see the Hokage working on his paperwork. Excuse me Hokage-sama, but we have an enemy in our midst, Ibiki said to Hiruzen as he handed him the note. Saratobi scanned the note as he narrowed his eyes. Should we cancel the Chunin exams? Ibiki asked. No, if we do the other countries will want to know why, and if we explain to them that we had a traitor, they would see that they could get through also, keep the exams going, but put a tight leash on security, he said to Ibiki. Ibiki bowed as he shunshined away. I won't let you harm us Orochimaru, Saratobi swore. Training ground number 44. Anko arrived at the grounds and sat patiently for the rest of the people to show up. No sooner than her did her students show up with a grin. You can't outrun us Anko, Naruto told her. Anko smiled. I guess not, I wasn't really trying to lose you though, Anko said to him. Everyone sat down as they waited for the others. Well that part was easy, Haku said as she leaned on Naruto. Kiba nodded. No kidding, that was the best nap I ever had in a long time, Kiba said as he stretched. Shizune laid on Naruto's lap. We have our glorious leader to thank for that, Shizune said as she gave Naruto a kiss. Naruto smiled. Thus doing what is best, no sense in getting worked up so soon, Naruto told them. Anko laid on Naruto's adjacent shoulder. 
Well, it will be fun to see a village like this one burn, Anko said to them. Everyone laughed as they nodded as waited for the group of people. Ten minutes later. Everyone showed up as Team 7 got up. Naruto looked at a weird woman who was at the back of the group. Naruto smiled. Sorry Orochimaru, but you haven't earned the right to destroy Konoha, that right is for me and my family, Naruto said with an evil smile. Orochimaru shivered in his disguise. What is this unsettling feeling? He wondered. Naruto smiled as he slipped away to Anko. Naruto grabbed Anko, Kiba, Shizune, and Haku as they went behind a tree. Anko do you see that woman over there? Naruto asked as he pointed to her. Anko turned around and saw a strange woman with a hat on her head. Yeah I see her, what about it? She asked. Naruto smiled. That is Orochimaru in a disguise, Naruto told her. Anko was about to react, but was stopped by Naruto's hand. She turned to Naruto. Anko calm down, I know you want him dead, trust me I know, which is why I will give you this reward early, Naruto said as he bit her neck. Anko moaned a little as she felt a mixture of pain and pleasure. Naruto took his mouth off her neck and kissed her. There, your curse mark is gone, that mark I have given you is the same that I will give, Haku-chan, Zabuza, and Kiba after the exams. This mark triples everything on you, your chakra, your stamina, your power and everything else except height. You have also been given that mark as a sign that you are my mate and no one else's. You will also be given a tail like mine and Shizune's, Naruto told her. Anko jumped for joy as she kissed her new boyfriend. Oh thank you Naruto-kun, can I kill Orochimaru? Anko asked. Naruto frowned. Sorry Anko not yet, trust me when he dies, you are going to personally do it, but that time isn't right now, but you can fight him to see how much you have changed, Naruto said to her. Anko squealed as she smoothed her head into Naruto's chest. Thank you so much, my demonic boyfriend, Anko said sweetly. Naruto smiled. I aim to please, he told her. Anko smiled as she went back out. Kibble looked out worried. Um Naruto, when I get that mark does that mean that I he was stopped by Naruto? Aha, no Kiba, you aren't a mate when you get the mark, the mark reacts differently from men and women. Men are considered potential connections to my cause, Naruto assured him. Kiba breathed a sigh of relief as they walked back. Anko appeared in front of the group. Alright Gaki, you will have to sign these forms, this states that if you die here, we aren't held accountable for this, Anko said to them. Everyone signed the forms and gave them to Anko. Anko smiled as she held out two scrolls. This is a heaven and earth scroll, you are supposed to find other teammates and fight each other for the scrolls, she said to them. One examinee held up his hand. What about them? He asked pointing to Naruto's group. It's not fair that they get four people and we get three, he said to her. Anko sighed. Naruto's team with the addition of Haku will be given an extra scroll and will have to look for another one for her, Anko said to them. Naruto nodded as did his team. Everyone got their scrolls as they put them up. Naruto turned to his group. Haku, Kiba give me the scrolls, Naruto told them. Both gave him the scrolls as Naruto wrote a blood seal over his pouch. There now no one can touch these, but us, Naruto told them. Anko opened the gate. Well Gaki, good luck, go. She yelled as teams rushed into the field. Naruto and his team ran off as they entered the forest. Anko closed the gate. As soon as she did, Anko heard a few screams. Am, who dies that fast? She wondered. Anko then went back to the task at hand. It's a shame that I can't kill him, but the f inside the forest. Naruto where are we going? Kiba asked. We are going to get Haku-chan's scroll first then our own, Naruto told them. Everyone nodded in understanding. As soon as they touched ground they were encountered by three rain shinobi. Fork over the scroll and we let you go, he said to them. Naruto smiled. And what scroll do you have? He asked. The man smiled. I have a heaven scroll, he said to them. Oh how unfortunate for you, I need that, Naruto said as he disappeared behind the man. Naruto held a kunai as he smiled. You must be very unlucky rain scum, Naruto said as he killed the man. He took the scroll from his pocket and put it into the blood seal. Well that takes care of that, Naruto said to his group. Shizune and Haku nodded as they stood over their own kills. Oh well, that was too easy, Shizune said as she licked some blood of her hand. Haku swiped the blood off her own hand. Now now Shizu-chan, we will find someone better, Naruto assured her. Shizune nodded as the group ran off. With Gara and his group. Gara just finished destroying a group of ninja as his sand absorbed the blood. Kenkuro took their scroll and laughed. Well let's go, we have what we came here for, Kenkuro said to them. Tamari nodded. Gara walked around aimlessly. Where is he? Where is the one whose blood mother craves, where are you Naruto Uzumaki? Gara wondered as the group headed to the tower. Back to Naruto and his group. Everyone roamed the trees for an opponent as they saw Hinata and Shino, along with an unconscious Azuke on the ground, fending off three sound shinobi. Naruto sighed. 
Great, the team got bit again, not like it matters, Naruto told them. Everyone laughed as they nodded. As they saw Shino and Hinata hit the ground, they decided to move. Sorry, but you weren't killing Sasuke, that pleasure is for me and my group alone, Naruto told them. One man stepped forward. He hand bandages over his body, only revealing here eye to the group. Sorry brat, but the Ichiha is dying by me, said the man. Listen Dozu, I can kill you, but that is a pain so leave and I might let you go, Naruto said with a look that promised certain death. Dozu looked surprised. How does this kid know my name? Dozu wondered. A raven-haired woman who was with them soon backed up. Dozu, Zaku let's go, he is serious, she said to them. Zaku hit the girl in the gut as she fell down and gripped her stomach. Shut up kin, we are killing that Ichiha, even if his friends interfere, Zaku said to her. Naruto's eyes turned to slits. To hurt your own teammate is unforgivable, Naruto said to them. Dozu laughed. She is a fish, it is of no consequence to us, he said to Naruto. Naruto's eyes narrowed. Naruto whispered to Shizune. You can have Zaku dear, Naruto told her. Shizune smiled. Oh Naruto-kun, you are so generous, Shizune said as she walked forward. She had on one of the happiest smiles in her life. Naru-kun says that I can kill you, I am going to have fun, Shizune said as she disappeared. Zaku's eyes widened and before he knew it he was on the ground in pain. Ah what the hell happened? He asked. Shizune reappeared. Oh that was me shattering your nervous system, Shizune said with a smile. Shizune made her chakra blade. Unlike a normal blue chakra blade, this one had a black and red combo. Shizune smiled as she stepped forward. This little piggy went to the village market, she said as she cut off an arm. Zaku screamed in pain as he saw his arm on the ground. Dozu stood in fear of the group. He had never known true fear until today. And this little piggy went to the bank, Shizune said as she cut off a leg. Blood sloshed out of Zaku's body as he felt his life leave his body. Shizune continued this process until he was limbless. Shizune smiled. Ah oh, why I'm all out of piggies, oh wait no I'm not, Shizune said as she raised her blade over his head. And this little piggy went over to the other side, Shizune said she severed his head. Shizune walked back to her group. How was that Naru-kun? She asked. Naruto smiled. Wonderfully evil Shizu-chan, Naruto told her. He turned to Dozu. Now you can leave or you can end up like your friend there, Naruto told him. Dozu left his scroll and shot away leaving Kin all by herself. Naruto walked up to Kin. Kin was terrified as she tried to back up only to hit a tree. He's gonna kill me, he's really gonna kill me, I don't wanna die. Kin said as she waited for death to make itself known. That death never came, what came was a hand over her cheek. She opened her eyes to see a smiling Naruto. Are you alright, those guys didn't hurt you did they? Naruto asked. Kin blushed, but backed away. No thank you, but why? She asked. Naruto smiled. Well those with teammates like that should get new ones, well we need your scroll, Naruto said to her. Kin blushed as she looked closely at his defined body. He's kind of cute, his is being nice to me, why is it? We are enemies and yet I feel that I can trust him with all of my life, she wondered. Naruto took her scroll as he and his group left in a good mood. See you later Kin-chan, Naruto told her as they left. Kin stared until he was gone. Kin-chan. She wondered as her blush reddened. Kin got up and let to exit the forest. I think I want to see him again, she said as she left. With Naruto and his group. Man Naru-kun's really laying all of the moves down today, Haku said to him. Naruto blushed. What can I say, I am a sucker for good looks, Naruto said as he kissed Haku and Shizune as the two blushed. Kiba blushed a bit but looked up. Boy do I feel like a third wheel, Kiba said to them. Shizune smiled as she kissed Kiba on the cheek. Kiba blushed at the action. You're no third wheel Kiba, you will get a girl I just know it, Shizune said to him. Kiba's blush reddened as he nodded. Thank you, he said as the group headed for the tower. With Anko. Anko headed into the forest to search for her disgrace of a master, as she happened on the same woman Naruto pointed to her. Anko appeared behind him and smiled. Never thought I would get to fight you, Anko said to him. The person turned around. I am surprised you remember me Anko-chan, Orochimaru said to her. As he looked at her, he suddenly went into thought. Strange. Her curse mark isn't reacting to me, Orochimaru thought. Anko smiled. Sorry Orochimaru, but only one person can call me Anko-chan, and that is the man I love, Anko said to him. Orochimaru laughed. The man you love, Kukuku and who is that? He asked. Anko still smiled. It is of no consequence to you, just know that he is so much stronger than you it is almost no contest, Anko said to him. Orochimaru chuckled. I highly doubt that, but it's fun to dream, well if you won't tell me who he is, he pulled out his sword. Then I will make you tell me, he said to her. Anko smirked as she made her blood seal on her arm. She unsheathed her sword from her arm and swung it around. 
Sorry Orochi, but you aren't worthy enough to know my love's name, Anko said as she ran straight at Orochimaru. Forest of death. Anko charged Orochimaru with her blade as she lessened the distance between the two. Orochimaru was taken back by the sudden speed, but quickly reacted as his sword clashed with Anko's. Orochimaru smiled. Impressive Anko-chan, you have improved greatly, Orochimaru said to her. Anko smiled. Thanks for the compliment Orochi, but, she said as she pivoted her foot and disappeared. Orochimaru's eyes widened as he felt a foot hit his face and propelled him into a tree. Anko reappeared with her foot sticking out. That isn't all there is to me, she said to him. Orochimaru laughed as he came out of the tree unharmed. Orochimaru dusted himself off. He turned to see a smiling Anko. What's so funny? He asked. Anko smiled. All my life, I could never get a hit on you, but now I have the power to kill you, but I won't, Anko said to her. Orochimaru smiled. Oh and why won't you? He asked. Anko sighed and formed another smile. Anko threw her sword at his head. Orochimaru easily dodged the blade by ducking as the sword stuck to the tree behind him. As he raised his head, he saw Anko instantly in front of him. Because my lover doesn't want me to, Anko told him as she kicked him in the air. Orochimaru's expression changed to confusion. She's so fast, even people in Curse Mark II form can't get that speed, Orochimaru thought as he backflipped. Anko ran until she was directly where Orochimaru would land. Anko did some hand signs as she got ready. Orochimaru smiled as he threw his blade at Anko. It's not that easy Anko, Orochimaru said to her as the sword impaled her body. Anko smiled as her body turned to smoke and a seal came shooting at Orochimaru. Shit, Orochimaru said the seal hit his body. Soon a seal appeared on his body and faded. Orochimaru hit the ground as he got up. Was that supposed to do something? He asked her. Anko nodded. Yep it does this Anko said as she disappeared. Orochimaru waited as he tried to feel for her presence. He didn't react fast enough as Anko planted her foot into his stomach. Orochimaru gasped as he fell down in pain. Damn it, she is too fast, oh well I didn't want to use this, but now there is no choice, Orochimaru said to himself. As Anko walked up to him, Orochimaru did his hand signs. Bijutsu he said as he smiled. Orochimaru's smile faded as nothing happened. Anko tried to compose herself from laughing as she looked at Orochimaru's display to use a jutsu. Sorry Orochimaru, the seal I placed on you is a chakra restriction seal, however this one is different, for a limited amount of time it transfers your chakra to me. So in addition to my own, I now have yours also, Anko explained. Orochimaru gasped. He was in trouble. Anko smiled. Basically, you are just as human as a civilian, Anko said to him. Orochimaru's eyes narrowed. He knew this was a different Anko. This Anko was so powerful and strong. All the emotional ties that would have held her down against him were gone. This Anko played with him like he was nothing but a genin to her. Anko picked up Orochimaru by his neck and pinned him to a tree. Dread softly where you step Orochi, I can kill you, but I won't, so I will settle for this, my present to you Orochimaru, I can't tell you what it is, but it will cause you immense pain, Anko said to him. Orochimaru fell back on a tree. I might have to call this invasion off, Orochimaru thought as he laid there. With Anko. Anko was running through the trees with a big smile on her face. I can't believe this power, I toyed with Orochimaru, I felt like he was nothing compared to me, thank you for this Naruto-kun, Anko said as she ran to leave the gates. With Naruto and his group. Team 7 had made it to the tower with three days to spare. As they entered the hall they took out their scrolls and rolled them on the floor. Soon the scrolls glowed as words were spelled out. Soon Iruka came and took the scrolls. Nicely done everyone, you all pass, congratulations, Iruka said to them. Everyone nodded. Is anyone else here? Haku asked. Iruka nodded. Only soon as team, they got here a few hours before you guys, he said to them. Everyone shrugged their shoulders. Oh well, you can't always be first, Shizune said to them. Everyone laughed, but nodded. Yeah I guess not, come on guys, let's go rest, we have quite a few days for recovery, Naruto said to them. Everyone nodded as they walked off. They all went into a private room as they sat down and discussed some plans. So what do we do now Naruto? Kiba asked. Naruto turned to him as he sat on the couch. What do you mean Kiba? He asked. Kiba sighed. Who else are you recruiting to the destruction of Konoha? Kiba asked. Naruto leaned his head back on the couch. I have a few ideas, don't worry, Naruto said with a smile. Kiba nodded as he laid back. So are these people going to live at the Namikaze compound with you? He asked. Naruto nodded. Yeah if they want, I won't force anyone to live there, Naruto told him. Kiba nodded as he laid back into the chair. Naruto lifted up his head with only some slight worry as he turned to Kiba. So Kiba, what did your family say? Naruto asked. Kiba's eyes shot open as he turned to Naruto. Kiba thought it over and smiled. 
they said that you can count on them for help. Apparently my family was also getting sick of Kanoha's mistreatment of animals as they used them for experimentation. So my family told me to tell you that you can fully count on the Inuzuka clan for this, Kiba said to him. Naruto laughed. Wow so your mother agreed to it? He asked. Kiba nodded. She was the first to agree, my sister being the second. Oh one more thing, both said that they wanted to meet you later after the Chunin exams, Kiba mentioned. Naruto nodded, then looked up at the ceiling. I wonder what they want. Naruto said in his thoughts. Shizune and Haku came through the door to see the guys on the couch. Naruto and Kiba looked up at them. So anything new Shizu-chan? Haku-chan? Naruto asked. Both blushed, but shook their heads. No nothing Naruto-kun, Shizune said to him. I don't think anyone is coming until tomorrow, Haku answered. Naruto nodded. Alright let's get some sleep then we, Naruto was interrupted by a crash into his chest. Naruto fell to the floor as he registered the figure. Naruto looked to see purple hair and a dango stick inside the person's mouth. Hello Anko-chan, Naruto said to her. Anko looked up cheerfully. Hello Naru-kun, Anko said to him. Naruto smiled. Naruto-kun this power is incredible, I took on Orochimaru like he was nothing, I wasn't even serious, thank you for the power my love, Anko said to him. Naruto nodded. You're very much welcome my snake mistress, Naruto said as he kissed her cheek. Anko blushed a bit before getting of Naruto. Naruto got up as he motioned for his group. Everyone got up as Naruto began an explanation. Alright everyone after the three days, we will have preliminary matches, after that we will be given a month of training to prepare for the finals. I have no doubt all of us will make the finals, so have fun, and if you fight a Kanoha shinobi try not to kill them, Naruto said to them. Everyone laughed but nonetheless nodded. Naruto nodded as he turned to Anko. Hey Anko-chan, can examinees leave the place? Naruto asked. Anko looked confused but nodded. Yes, all those who pass are allowed to leave, but must be back before the prelims start, Anko told him. Naruto nodded with a smile. Alright, then I will meet with Tsum-chan and Hana-chan, and a bit later I will take Anko-chan on her date, Naruto told her. Anko smiled as she nodded. Alright Naruto-kun, pick me up at 7? She asked. Naruto smiled. Wouldn't think of missing it, Naruto told her. Anko nodded as she sunshined back home to find a dress. Shizune and Haku nodded as they sat back on the couch to take a few hours to sleep. Kiba decided to walk Akamaru and left. Naruto sighed. Okay time to see what is up with the Inuzukas, Naruto said as he shunshined out of the building. Inuzuka compound. Tsum and Hana were sitting quietly in the living room as talked about recent events, more precisely their love lives. Hana, you need to get a guy already, you're 18 and you've turned down every guy who has asked you out, why wouldn't you try someone? Tsum asked. Hana blushed as she looked at her mother. What about you mother? It has been three years since father's death and I don't see you trying to find anyone either, Hana defended. Tsum got quiet as she looked down. I guess so, maybe running the clan takes too much of my time, Tsum told her. Hana turned to her mother and smiled. Come on mother, I am sure someone will go for you, Hana said trying to cheer up her mother. Tsum laughed as she turned to her daughter. The I wonder about that, still you should find someone strong and dependable, like Naruto, Tsum told her. Hana blushed brightly at the thought of her and Naruto dating. She had to admit that he had piqued her interest. She heard Anko say how strong the kid was on the battlefield. It did make her want to at least see him. Would you try Naruto mother? Hana asked. Tsum looked up as she thought about it. And that might not be so bad I think, but I am more than half his age, Tsum told her. Hana smiled. Shouldn't stop you from trying, she said to her. Tsum blushed as she looked at Hana. Since when did you get so good at convincing people? Tsum asked. Hana smiled. Since the times I see you talk with people, Hana told her. The two women laughed as they heard a knock on the door. Tsum got up and walked to the door. Who is it? She asked. It's Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said to her. Tsum smiled as she opened the door. Tsum smiled as she saw a 13-year-old Naruto in his clothes as he entered the house. Hello Naruto, what brings you here? She asked. Naruto smiled. Diba said you and Hana wanted to talk to me, Naruto told her. Tsum's face lit up in realization. Oh that's right please come in, she said to him. Naruto nodded as he followed her to the living room. Tsum smiled as she entered the living room. Hana we have a guest, Tsum said getting Hana to turn around. Hana turned to see Naruto walk in and blushed. Naruto, why are you here? Hana asked brimming with embarrassment. Naruto chuckled as he saw the way the two were acting. You said you needed to talk to me, Naruto told her. Hana's eyes shot up as she nodded. Oh that's right, please sit down, Hana said to him. Naruto nodded as he sat on the floor with them. Tsum and Hana decided to begin. So Naruto, we did agree to help you, but can you tell us why you want Kanoha destroyed? Hana asked. 
Naruto's smile faded as he looked up at the ceiling. He sighed as he looked back down. Naruto told them his story. How he lost everything to Sasuke and how the village cheered for his dead daughter's death. How he was from the future and how everything led up to this point. Both Han and Tsum were in tears from the whole story. Tsum pounded the floor with her fist while Hana tried to regain control of her emotions. Naruto ended his story and stopped. That is the truth, Naruto told them. Both women nodded as they stopped crying. Tsum bit her thumb. Damn that itcha. So he thinks he can do whatever the hell he wants and not have consequences, oh I will show him how an Inuzuka fights, Tsum said. Naruto smiled as he heard a promise. Naruto grabbed both their hands and looked at them. Thank you for your help and support, I really need you, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, he said to them. Both women blushed as they nodded. Their hearts started beating fast as they felt his warm hands on theirs. Sure Naruto, we would be more than honored to help you, Tsum said to him. Naruto nodded. Just one thing. I need to show you my true self, Naruto told them. Both women nodded. They now knew that Naruto was only henge to look young, but wasn't really 13. Naruto did his sign as he released the jutsu. Hi, he yelled. Smoke filled the room as the two waited to see what he looked like. As the smoke cleared, both women blushed heavily as their mouths fell to the ground. They saw the cute fox ears, the fox tail, and his wonderful body. Both women tried to speak, but had the exact same thoughts. Naruto is so hot, that Kami-like body is amazing, they both thought. Naruto smiled as he looked at them drool over his body. You like it? He asked. Both women snapped out of their dazes as Tsum ran up and claimed Naruto's right shoulder. Hana, I will take your advice and I will date Naruto, Tsum said to her. Hana shook her head as she claimed Naruto's other arm. Mother you told me to meet some guys so let me take Naruto, Hana told her. Both women argued over Naruto as they felt his chiseled muscles on their arms. Naruto smiled as he enjoyed the attention. This body causes much more trouble for me than I think, but I am not complaining, Naruto said as he got them to let go. Wait you're both looking for guys to date. Naruto asked. Both women nodded as kneeled down. Naruto chuckled as he got down on one knee and hugged them both. I am more than will to share if you both are, Naruto said in their ears. Both women blushed as they looked at each other. They both smiled as they each grabbed on of Naruto's arms. Just to let you know Naruto Inuzuka women like a strong man for their mate, Tsum said to him. Naruto smiled. You saying I'm not strong? Naruto asked. Tsum and Hana smiled. As you consider yourself now, what shinobi rank are you? They asked. Naruto smiled. And will level, maybe Kage if I go all out, Naruto told them. Tsum blushed and Hana squealed. Both smiled at each other and nodded. Need no stronger man than that, they both said as they kissed him on the cheek. Naruto smiled. So when do I date the two lovely ladies of the Inuzuka compound? Naruto asked. Both smiled. Whenever you like, just don't keep us waiting, Hana told him. Naruto nodded. Alright, then how about tonight at 7.15? Naruto asked. Tsum and Hana nodded. Naruto smiled as he kissed Hana on her cheek and Tsum on her cheek. See you in four hours, Naruto said to them as he left. Tsum and Hana laid on the couch and laughed. I think we got the same guy, it's amazing, Hana said to her mother. I wonder how amazingly flexible he is, Tsum wondered. Hana blushed as she looked at her mother. Why are you already thinking about that? She asked. Tsum smiled. Not sure, but it still amazes me he has other girls, I am so happy for the craw, Tsum said to Hana. Hana nodded in agreement. I will be so happy with such a kami near me, Hana said with a little chuckle. Tsum got up and stretched. Well I am going to go upstairs, she said to her daughter. Why? Hana asked. I have a date tonight, Tsum said as she ran upstairs. Hana laughed as she ran to her room to find a dress. Namikaze compound. Naruto arrived home to see Zabuza sleeping on the couch. Naruto laughed as he crept up to his room. Poor guy must have tired himself out from training, Naruto thought as he walked upstairs. As he passed by the rooms Naruto saw Haku's door open. Naruto peeked inside to see his Haku-chan on the bed reading a book in her gown. Naruto almost fainted from the sight of her long hair on the pink gown that she was wearing. Naruto smiled as he entered. So when did you get here? He asked her. Haku startled to see her blonde at the entrance. Haku blushed as she put her book down. I, I got here about 30 minutes ago, the tower was getting boring, so I left, Haku told him. Naruto nodded. Oh okay well have fun reading your book, Naruto told her. As Naruto left, Haku fidgeted as she thought to herself. Come on just grab him, you have been dating the guy for 6 months, you love him, and he loves you so just go for it, Haku said to herself. Haku nodded her head. Alright go for it, she said to herself. Naruto-kun. Haku said getting his attention. Naruto turned around. Yes Haku-chan, Naruto said to her. Haku blushed as she looked at him. Do you love me? She asked. 
Naruto smiled as he sat on the bed. Of course I love you, what is it? He asked. Haku looked at him and smiled. I want to love all of you and I want you to love all of me, Haku confessed. Naruto blushed as he heard her confession. While Naruto was in shock, Haku looked at him. Is that bad? She asked. Naruto snapped out of his daze and kissed her. Haku gasped as she felt his warm lips on hers. Naruto separated from her and smiled. Of course not, I love you Haku-chan, let me show you my love, Naruto told her. Haku blushed, but nodded. Please love me Naruto-kun, Haku said to him. Downstairs. Zabuza's eyes were wide open as he shuddered at the sounds he heard in the house. He sighed as he walked outside. I really didn't need to hear that, but Haku I am happy for you, he said as he grabbed his sword and began to train some more. 6.50 PM, Namikaze Compound. Naruto woke up to see his ice mistress next to him as she laid on his body. Naruto chuckled at the loving sight as he gave his Haku a kiss on the cheek. Haku smiled in her sleep as she stirred awake. Haku looked up at her blonde with a loving smile. Glad to see you are awake, Naruto told her. Haku smiled as she nodded. Well I was tired from our interaction today, Haku told him. Naruto smiled as he got out of bed. He let Haku stay in bed as he decided to get dressed. He remembered he promised three lovely ladies their dates, and who was he to disappoint? Naruto left Haku's room and went back to his room to get his clothes. As he headed to his room, Naruto passed Anko's room and saw her and her delegates trying to pick out a dress. No not this one, or maybe this one. Nah, oh this is perfect, Anko said with a happy smile. Naruto decided to leave as not to ruin the surprise of Anko in her dress. Naruto entered his room as he saw Shizune on the bed sleeping. Naruto smiled as he kissed her cheek. Shizune smiled as she squinted her eyes to see Naruto's form. What a loving wake-up call, you going somewhere? She asked. Naruto nodded as he got his suit on. He smiled as he sat on the bed with Shizune. Just to ask, why are you okay with sharing me? He asked. Shizune pondered Naruto's question as she sat up and rubbed her eyes. Naruto waited on the bed for her to reply to his question. After three minutes of thinking Shizune decided to answer. In truth Naruto-kun I am not sure, I just know that if other women love you as much as me, then they should get the chance to be with you also, Shizune told him. Naruto nodded in understanding as he kissed Shizune on the lips. After he broke the kiss Naruto looked at her. That is why I love you Shizu-chan, Naruto told her. Shizune nodded and smiled as she went back to sleep. Naruto smiled as he left the room and went downstairs. Naruto stood at the door and waited for his snake mistress to appear. As he waited he spotted Zabuza on the couch. Naruto decided to give Zabuza his mark since he had the time. Naruto walked over to Zabuza as he made the swordsman look up. What's up Gaki? He asked. Naruto smiled as he leaned closer. I have to give you the mark now, Naruto said to him. Zabuza nodded as Naruto bit his neck. Zabuza was a little freaked out from the action. He could handle pain, but to get bite on the neck by a guy felt weird. Naruto took his teeth out of Zabuza's neck as the mark appeared on him. Soon Zabuza glowed in a red light as it changed his features. His ears were now on his head, and he grew a gray fox tail that swayed around him as the light died down. Naruto smiled at Zabuza's features. Not bad Zabuza, Naruto told him. Zabuza checked himself out in a mirror and smiled. I feel like I could conquer the world with this power, Zabuza said to him with a smile. Naruto nodded as he did a hand sign and released Zabuza's gravity seals. Zabuza saw the purple light fade as he felt lighter than a feather. Man, I feel so light, I think I am too fast to be seen, Zabuza said to Naruto. Naruto nodded. Because you are, you can now do the true silent killing even with your sword, Naruto told him. Zabuza grabbed his sword and lifted it up like it was a paperweight. So easy to lift, I could toss this thing for miles, he said with a smile. Oh give your power a try outside, Naruto told him. Zabuza gladly nodded and ran outside for more training. Naruto decided to make a shadow clone as smoke appeared around him, and out came the clone. Well almost time to pick up the girls, Naruto told him clone. The clone nodded as it left the house to go get Hana and Tsum. Naruto waited for Anko to appear as he stood next to the door. After three minutes, Anko showed herself as Naruto took a long glance at her. Anko smiled as she walked down in a purple dress that showed most of her back and came down to her knees. Naruto almost got a nosebleed from the dress as he looked at Anko. How does this look Naruto-kun? Anko asked, eager to know the blonde's opinion. Naruto regained his composure and checked out his snake mistress. He only had one word to say. Gorgeous, Naruto said to her. Anko blushed at his compliment. As she came down to greet him she took a scan at his suit that hugged his hard body. Anko could practically drool over the hotness Naruto was showing. Naruto smiled as he was satisfied with Anko's reaction. Naruto took out his arm as Anko looked up. Shall we go now? He asked. Anko smiled as she put her hands over his shoulder. 
Let's go Naruto-kun, Anko said as Naruto let her out of the compound. But the other Naruto. The Naruto clone roamed the trees until he came up to the Inuzuka compound. He fixed his tie as he knocked on the door. He waited for about a minute until Tsum opened the door. The Naruto clone almost dispelled from the dress Tsum had on as he entered the house. You like it Naruto? Tsum asked. Naruto only nodded as he gazed at her dress. Tsum sported a purple dress also, but this one was strapless and came down to her thighs. Tsum also let her hair down as it came down to her shoulders. Naruto could get a clear view of her chest that really was defined. Tsum blushed at his intense gaze as she brought him out of his daze. I am glad you like this dress, Tsum told him. Naruto smiled as he got out of his stairs. You really pick a good one, Naruto told her. He looked around, but didn't see Hana. Where is Hana-chan? He asked. Tsum smiled as she pointed upstairs. She is getting ready right now, Tsum told him. Naruto nodded as he led Tsum to the couch, and the two sat down as they waited for Hana. So Tsum-chan, please tell me about yourself, like your likes, dislikes, and hobbies, Naruto told her. Tsum smiled as she nodded. Alright then, um well as my date knows, I am Tsum and Yuzuka, I run the Inuzuka clan for a long time now, my likes are dogs, lounging, and you. My dislikes are animal abusers, perverts, people who aren't tough and currently Kanoha. My hobby is training Kiba to be the next clan heir. Tsum told him. Naruto nodded with a smile. All good things Tsum-chan, Naruto told her. Tsum blushed at the compliment. Thank you Naruto, Tsum told him. Soon after some talking, Hana came downstairs in her dress. Sorry I am late, she said to them. Naruto looked up and almost lost his mind. The gorgeous, Naruto thought as he looked at Hana. Hana straightened her hair more as it easily fell down passing her shoulders. She sported a red dress with straps hanging from her shoulders. She had a moon crescent design on her dress, and she wore some red high heels. Hana blushed as she saw Naruto's face. You like it Naruto? She asked. Naruto blushed as he looked up and smiled. I it look so good on you Hana-chan, Naruto told her. Hana blushed and looked at the ground. Thank you Naruto, Hana told him. Naruto nodded as he headed for the door. He smiled as he opened the door. Well ladies, let us go now, Naruto told them. Both women blushed and nodded as they walked out of the house. Both women took one of Naruto's arms as they walked off. But Naruto and Anko. As they walked through the village, Anko could feel the stares on her and Naruto as they walked through the streets. So where are you taking me Naruto-kun? Anko asked. Naruto smiled as he shook his head. No 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 Anko-chan, it is a surprise, Naruto told her. Anko happily laid on Naruto's side as they walked. She was really looking forward to the surprise. As Naruto walked up to a restaurant he smiled as Anko looked up in amazement. Why you have the money for this place? Anko asked him. Naruto scoffed. Anko-chan of course I do, you wound me, Naruto said to her. Anko smiled as she kissed his cheek. I am sorry Naruto-kun, don't be mad at me, Anko pleaded with her eyes. Naruto blushed as he kissed her back. Couldn't be mad at you Anko-chan, come on, Naruto told her. Anko nodded as they walked up to the restaurant. As they entered the restaurant, Naruto took her up to the top of the building as they sat at a table with a spectacular view of Konoha. Even though they hated Konoha, they had to admit that it did have nice views. So you like the view Anko-chan? Naruto asked her. Anko smiled as she rested her hands on the table. This is a spectacular view Naruto-kun even if it is of this damn place, thank you, she told him. Naruto nodded as they took their orders for their food. As they sat down they went over their past lives and how they were brought to this point. Anko told Naruto about her past with Orochimaru and his betrayal. Naruto could tell it was a sore subject for her as she let a few tears fall down her face. Naruto could now see that their lives were very much similar. As they were served their food, both let the night of romance sweep them away as they enjoyed each other's company. But Naruto, Tsum, and Hana. As they and Yuzuka women held on to the blonde, they got their share of stares from the crowd of people. Some people thought the two were insane for dating a demon, others were jealousy that the blonde had more than one woman. Tsum and Hana could see some of the women drool over Naruto's body, which earned them a scowl from the two women that said back the fuck off. Naruto decided to let their date begin. So where would you two ladies like to go? He asked them. Both looked at him then looked at each other. Both smiled as they turned back to him. Dancing, they both told him. Naruto smiled as he took them to a bar nearby. As he walked them there, he just had to ask his question. So why dancing? He asked them. Both smiled as they explained. Naruto, Inuzuka men and women all love to move, we can never really sit still. So we are like a family of dancers, they told him. Naruto laughed as he nodded. All right, dancing it is, he said to them. Both women nodded as they entered the bar. Naruto sat them down as he disappeared for a second. Both women sat on their stools as they waited for him to return. Being two hot-looking women, they would naturally draw attention to themselves. 
Soon two guys came up to them with smiles on their face masking some hidden intentions. Hey ladies, mind giving us a dance? A man asked. Tsum and Hana narrowed their eyes and looked away. No thank you, we are with someone so get lost, Tsum said to them. One of the men stood to her and grabbed her hand. Come on pretty just one dance, he told her. Tsum was getting angry, and Hana knew that an angry Tsum was never a good thing for any reason. I will tell you to keep your filthy hands off me and my daughter, now leave, Tsum ordered. One of them shrugged and back off to leave, the other obviously wasn't as smart. Listen woman, I ask you nicely, now dance with me or else, he said holding up a kunai. Hana shook her head as Tsum was about to react, but didn't and formed a smile. Hana looked up and smiled also. What are you two laughing at he asked. Oh nothing, our date returned and he seems more than pissed, Tsum said to him. The man turned around to be met with one of the angriest glares he had ever met. He turned to see a blonde with a kunai at his throat. Naruto turned to his girls and smiled. Any trouble here ladies? He asked. Hana and Tsum nodded. Apparently this man thinks he can force us to dance with him, Hana told Naruto. Naruto sighed as he grabbed the man's arm and twisted it making it crack. The man screamed for Naruto to let go. Naruto smiled as he let the man go as he fell to the floor. Naruto grabbed his collar and looked him right in the eyes. Listen you piece of shit, these women are with me, they are my dates, and if I ever see you lay your filthy hands on them, I will make you disappear so fast that not even the best tracker ninja in the world can find you, Naruto told him. The man nodded as he ran out the door. Naruto walked up to his girls and gave them a hug. Are my ladies okay? He asked them. Tsum and Hana smiled and nodded. Yeah Naruto we are okay, thank you for that, they said to him. Naruto nodded and gave them a smile. Anything for my ladies, he said to them causing both to blush a dark red. Hana snapped out of her daze and looked at Naruto. So where did you go Naruto-kun? Hana asked. Naruto smiled. Me and the person who works here are friends, and I got him to play a song selection that I know you will like, Naruto told them. Both women smiled as they followed Naruto to the dance floor. Soon the room blazed with multicolor lights as music blazed around the dance floor. Tsum and Hana smiled at the music that Naruto gave them. Soon the girls dragged him to the floor. Naruto decided to make another shadow clone as they pair off and danced wildly to the music. Tsum could feel Naruto guide her to the fast beats of the music that made her heart pound with excitement. Hana glided along the dance floor as Naruto followed her in perfect unison, not missing a beat. Both women were fully enjoying their night as they danced with their blonde. The stage lights blazed around the bar and they attracted the attention of some customers there. All the people cheered for the women and their dance partners as they dance floor raged in excitement. Tsum could honestly say that she had never had so much fun even with her husband. Hana could feel that Naruto was the one for her. She had dated plenty of guys, but he seemed like the person she wanted to be with the most. Naruto smiled as he saw his Inuzuka ladies and their expressions. Naruto was very thankful for his stamina, he knew that if he didn't have such a large amount of it, he would probably have passed out by now. As the music slowed down the pace between the Tsum, Naruto, and Hana slowed as they were brought into a slow dance. Both women blushed as they glided along the floor with Naruto. You can be a real charmer Naruto-kun, Tsum said to him. Naruto was surprised at the suffix, but smiled. It's all for my ladies, love you Tsum-chan, Naruto told her. Tsum blushed as she muttered something about blonde men and their charming ways. Hana was enjoying the closeness with Naruto as she felt his warm body on hers. Hana could feel her heart beat rapidly from the feeling. Naruto smiled as he looked at her. I hope you are enjoying yourself, Hana, Naruto told her. Hana blushed as she looked at him. This is the best night of my life Naruto-kun, thank you for this, Hana told him. Naruto smiled as he leaned close to her. I would do anything for my ladies, I love you Hana-chan, Naruto told her. Hana blushed but nodded as the music slowly stopped. Naruto took the girls as they left the dance floor to get something to eat. But Anko and Naruto. Anko and Naruto had finished their meals after an intriguing conversation about destroying Konoha. Anko smiled as Naruto decided to take her home. As they walked in the crowd, Naruto's eyes met one of the civilian council's eyes as she blinked to make sure she wasn't dreaming. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the pink-haired woman. Great of all people, it's the pink fish mother, Naruto said as he and Anko passed her. Sukuno looked back at them as they left. I should inform the Hokage about this, having multiple women is only for clans, she said to herself as she walked off. Naruto sighed. Anko-chan, I think I might see the Hokage after the prelims, Naruto told her. Anko turned to her blonde in confusion. Why? She asked. Naruto sighed. I think a certain pink fish will want you and my other ladies to break up with me and go to the damned Ichiha, Naruto told her. Anko narrowed her eyes. I'd like to see them try and force me to marry his ass, I would kill them all, Anko said to him. Naruto smiled. I could always count on you, but there is no need, I will take care of it, Naruto assured her. 
Anko nodded as the two went home. Naruto wanted to do some more, but he and Anko had the exams tomorrow, and they had to get back early, so Naruto took her home. Namikaze Compound. Before the two entered the compound, Anko hugged Naruto and gave him a deep kiss. Naruto smiled as he wrapped his hands around her and kissed her back dominating her lips. As they separated Anko smiled at him. Thank you for the date Naruto-kun, I hope to do this again, Anko told him. Naruto nodded. Anytime Anko-chan, I love you so of course we will date again, Naruto told her. Anko nodded as she went inside. Naruto smiled as he waited for his clone to disperse telling him how the date went. With Tsum, Hana and Naruto. Everyone was at a table eating as their food as they enjoyed the night. As the women looked at Naruto they nodded as they turned to him. So Naruto-kun, tell us you likes and dislikes and hobbies, they said to him. Naruto smiled as he looked up from his food. Alright why not, he said to them. Both women listened intently to him. My likes are Raymond, my family, embarrassing the Achiha and his fish, also I love my ladies, Naruto said to them making them blush as he continued. My dislikes are Konoha in general, Sasuke Achiha, Sakura Haruno, the council and anyone who harms my precious people. My hobby is training, thinking of ways to destroy Konoha and spending time with my family, Naruto told them. Both women nodded and understanding. Naruto smiled as he turned to Hana. Oh I got your mother Hana, what about you? He asked her. Hana blushed as she looked down at the table. My likes are dogs, my family, training and Naruto-kun. My dislikes are animal abusers, those who don't train seriously, Konoha, and those who are conceited. My hobby taking care of animal at the village animal hospital where I work, Hana told him. Naruto smiled as he nodded. Like mother like daughter in some ways, I love that, Naruto said in his thoughts. Naruto turned to them and smiled. Alright then ladies, shall we finish our meals and head home, he told them. Both women smiled and nodded. Everyone soon finished their food as they engaged in casual conversation. Soon Naruto took the two women home. In Yuzuka compound. Naruto led them up to the door to where they turned to him. We had a fun time Naruto-kun, thank you for a fun night, Hana told him as she kissed his cheek and went inside. Naruto turned to Tsum who was blushing. Tsum looked at him and looked back down. Well like Hana said, I had a fun time Naruto-kun, thank you and well I I love you, she said as she kissed his other cheek and ran inside. Naruto blushed with a smile as he walked away soon dispelling. Namikaze compound. Naruto sat on the porch as memories from his clone and their night flooded his mind. As the memories stopped, Naruto smiled. Good night my ladies, I am glad you had a good time, Naruto said as he went inside. Early morning. Naruto got up from his bed to see his lovely wife, Shizune sleeping next to him. Naruto smiled as he kissed her cheek. Shizune squirmed awake as she turned to see her blonde next to her. MMM good morning Naruto-kun, Shizune said to him. Naruto smiled as he looked at her. Good morning my demon mistress, Naruto said to her. Shizune chuckled at the name as she got up. The day the second exam is over right? She asked. Naruto nodded. That's right, now let's get our team and head out, Naruto told her. Shizune nodded as she went to wash up and get ready. Naruto soon followed as he washed his body also. Soon both came out of the room as they went to Haku's room. Naruto saw Haku soundly asleep and didn't want to wake her up, but he had to. Haku-chan, wake up my ice mistress, Naruto said to her. Haku squirmed awake as she turned to her blonde leader and boyfriend on the bed. Haku GT up slowly and adjusted her eyes. What day is it? She asked. Naruto smiled. The day is the prelims for the Chunin exams, Naruto told her. Haku opened her eyes as she went to the bathroom. Naruto and Shizune smiled as they waited on the bed. So what do you think the chances are of you fighting Sasuke? Shizune asked. Naruto showed an evil smirk as he looked at her. I really don't know, but he better be hope that for his sake he doesn't fight me cause I would kill him, Naruto said to her. Shizune smiled as she leaned on Naruto's shoulder. You know, today is Karami's birthday, Shizune said with a sad smile. Naruto nodded also. I know, she would have been too today, Naruto said to Shizune. Shizune let a tear fall down her face as Naruto comforted her. Don't worry Shizune, I don't know how, but we will get Karami back, Naruto swore. Shizune looked at him and gave him a kiss. Thank you Naruto-kun, Shizune told him. Soon Haku came in with her clothes on as the two looked at her. Both nodded as the three went downstairs. Naruto saw Zabuza in his jonin vest as he ate breakfast. Going somewhere Zabuza? Naruto asked him. Zabuza nodded. Yeah I got a mission with some of the Chunin later, Zabuza told him. Naruto nodded in a smile as the three left the house. Zabuza smirked as he went back to his breakfast. Pick ass Naruto, Shizune, Haku, Zabuza said to the door. As Naruto's group left, they met up with Kiba as Naruto grabbed them and Shunshine to the tower. At the tower. Anko sat on a couch as she calmly waited for her team. 
No sooner than her thoughts, Naruto and his group appeared with full smiles. Anko sighed as she got up. Alright everyone is here, let's get started, Anko said to them. Everyone nodded as they all walked out and lined up with the rest of the genin who were lucky enough not to die. Naruto turned as he saw Sasuke with his hand on his neck. Naruto smirked as he looked around the room. He saw the Suna team, Guy's team, and all of the other rookies. What surprised Naruto a little was when he saw Kin, Dozu, and the supposed to be dead Zaku. Naruto turned to Shizune who smirked. Oh joy, I get to kill him all over again, Shizune said to Naruto. Naruto smiled and nodded as he went into thought. I guess Orochimaru would use his resurrection jutsu, but I didn't know he would waste it on this guy, Naruto thought, but shrugged it off. Everyone turned their attention to the Hokage who was at the top of the stadium. Congratulations to all you genin who managed to survive this round, because of the excess group of people, we will now have preliminary matches for everyone, when your name is called come down to the area and fight. Good luck to you all, he said as he stepped back. Soon a man with a strange couch appeared in the center of the room. Ouch couch I am Hei Jeko, and I will be your proctor for this part of the exam. Everyone get off the floor. Sasuke and Akato Yoroi stay on, Hei announced. Naruto smirked as he walked up the stairs muttering something about the emo escaping death. As his team went to the side, they all looked at the fight. Naruto turned to wave to a blushing Hinata and the calm Shino. As Sasuke and Akato stood on the floor, Hei brought his hand down and backed away. Ajim, he shouted as he back up. Sasuke smirked as he looked at Akato. You should consider yourself lucky that you get to have your ass kicked by an Ichiha, Sasuke told him. Okado smiled as he replied. We will see, he said as he charged at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked as he ran at Okado. Both delivered a barrage of fast punches on the other as they countered every single one. Okado managed to grab Sasuke's head as his hand glowed. Sasuke felt his chakra drain as he pulled from the man's grip. Am I couldn't get all your chakra, oh well I will get the rest, he said as he charged. Sasuke smirked as Okado let out a punch. Sasuke ducked under the punch as he let out a kick at the man's stomach. Okado screamed in some pain as he was sent to the air. Sasuke smirked as he disappeared and reappeared behind Okado. Looks like I get to try my new move on you, Sasuke smiled as he brought his foot around. Okado anticipated the kick and blocked. Not that easy kid, he said to Sasuke. Sasuke still smiled as he twisted and brought his other foot around as he appeared in front of Okado. Sasuke sent a punch then other as Okado went towards the group. Sasuke still kept his arrogant smirk. You still have a long way to go, he said as he put his other foot on Akato's stomach and slammed him into the ground. Barrage of lions, Sasuke yelled as he stood over the knocked out Akato. Hey came up and nodded. Winner. Sasuke Chia, hey said to him. Sasuke smirked as he went upstairs. He passed Naruto as he gave him a look that said beat that dope. Naruto sighed as he looked at the board. Naruto smirked as he looked over at Zaku. Boy dude you are really unlucky, Naruto said to him. Naruto managed to wave the kin who blushed but waved back. Zaku smiled as he saw his name, but didn't see the challenger's name. Alright watch me mop the floor with whoever this is, he said as he landed on the ground. Soon someone came down the stairs with a big smile. Zaku had his eyes closed trying to look calm, as Hayate looked at the challenger. Hayate waved his hand. Ajim, he said as he backed away. Zaku opened his eyes as he was ready to fight. As soon as his eyes opened his face paled as he saw the last person he would have wanted to see. Nice to see you again Zaku, I hope to have fun again, Shizune said as her hand glowed with a chakra blade. Zaku's eyes showed absolute fear as he backed up into a wall. No not you, Zaku said as Shizune walked to him. Zaku could swear that he saw the gates of hell open as he looked into Shizune's eyes. Zaku lost all control of his will and screamed with terror in his voice. No. S stay away from me why you psycho, I I don't want to die, ah. He shouted as he ran out the arena. Shizune showed a blank look on her face while in her mind she was laughing her ass off. Meanwhile, all the audience, save Naruto's group were confused. The man sounded like the girl was going to kill him, which she had before. Shizune looked up in fake confusion. Um does this mean I win? She asked. Hayate regained his senses and walked forward. Um due to Zaku's withdrawal, winner. Shizune Kato, Hayate announced. Everyone decided to shrug off the victory as Shizune went up the stairs. She stood next to Naruto. Naruto smiled. You enjoy yourself? He asked. Shizune smiled. The way he screamed felt so good, that was too easy, Shizune told Naruto as they looked at the board. The next names came up to the screen. Hei decided to speak. Next match. Haku vs Choji Akamichi, Hei said to her. Haku smiled as she nodded. Haku went down to the field as Choji appeared also. Hei put his hand down. Ajim, he said to them. Choji smiled as he started. Nikidin Sensha, he yelled as his body rolled at Haku. 
Haku smiled as she took out her senbo needles. Useless, I am too quick for that, she said as she disappeared causing everyone to gasp especially Sasuke. Choji lost track of her as he realized he was encased in a dome of ice walls. Sorry Choji-san, Haku said as her kunai slammed into his rolling body. Haku smiled as she formed some water. Zensatsu suishm a thousand needles of death, Haku yelled as the water formed into ice needles and shot at Choji. Choji screamed as the needles stuck to his body. Choji fell down unconscious. Hayate went over and looked at him. Winner. Haku, Hayate said with a cough. Haku nodded as she went back upstairs. Naruto and his team gave a shout of victory as they smiled. Suddenly they all saw Sasuke walk over to Haku. Look here girl, I am an Ichiha, and therefore I give you the honor of being my wife and bearing my children, Sasuke told her. Haku looked at him in confusion as she tried to fathom what he just said to her. Naruto sighed as he rolled his eyes. Kiba scowled at Sasuke, and Shizune narrowed her eyes. Anko narrowed her eyes at Sasuke. Everyone who could hear, waited for Haku's response even the Jonin and the Hokage. Haku suddenly smirked as she leaned on Naruto and kissed his cheek. So sorry Ichiha, but this is my man, I would rather die than settle for anything less, she said with a smile. Almost everyone laughed as they heard Haku's response. Sasuke seethed as he walked back to his group. Kakashi narrowed his eyes as he walked to the girl. Naruto's eyes turned to slits as he saw the copy ninja advance towards their group. Here was the Ichiha's loyal dog, who bent over for his master. He always talked about friends and not abandoning them, but he was the main person who did just that in the future. Naruto could almost kill him, but resisted the intense urge. Um Haku was it? He asked with a sheepish grin. Haku turned to him and looked at him. Yes sir? She asked. Kakashi sighed. With all due respect please reconsider Sasuke's proposal. He is a good boy and a powerful genin. I do believe that he would be the perfect husband for you instead of Naruto, Kakashi said, trying to show Naruto some humility, and was failing badly at it. Haku narrowed her eyes at him. Was he telling her who she could love? Did he just say that Sasuke was better than Naruto? Haku seethed as she looked at the man still smiling. Listen here Kakashi was it? I don't love the Achiha and I never will. I love Naruto-kun and I won't tolerate people berating the man I love. Now get out of my presence before I turn you into a human refrigerator, Haku threatened. Kakashi and everyone widened their eyes at Haku as Naruto's group smirked. Kakashi narrowed his eyes, but nodded. Yes sorry Haku, he said as he left. Naruto smiled as he looked at her. I didn't know you loved me so much, Naruto told her. Haku looked at him and smiled. Oh Naruto-kun, of course I love you. You are the only man I need, Haku told him. Naruto smiled as he kissed her. Hey it coughed as he brought everyone back to the match. Next match. Tamari vs Tenten, he said as the weapons mistress and the wind mistress came down. Naruto smiled as he watched. He turned to his group. You guys know that we do need a person to make weapons for us, Naruto told them. Everyone nodded, as Anko smiled. You suggesting our weapons mistress down there? She asked. Naruto smiled. Maybe I am, Naruto told her. As they talked everyone turned back to see that the match was over with Tenten over Tamari's fan. Winner. Tamari, hey, said to them. Tamari flung Tenten off her fan as she went upstairs not before winking at Naruto. Naruto sighed as he smiled at her. I think I attracted the wind mistress also, Naruto told them. Everyone turned to see Tamari staring at Naruto. Haku, Shizune, and Anko sighed while Kiba gave Naruto a thumbs up. Everyone turned back to see the board. Next. Shikamaru vs Kin, hey, said to them. Naruto gave Kin a thumbs up as she blushed but went to fight Shikamaru. Man why is it a girl? Shikamaru asked. Kin twitched. You saying there is something wrong with a girl? She asked. Shikamaru shrugged his shoulders. You know what, I give up this is a pain, he said with a yawn. Kin scoffed as she walked back upstairs. Um winner. Kin, hey, said to them. Everyone's jaw dropped to the ground as Asuma complained to which Shikamaru ignored. The board lit up again. Ino Yamanaka vs Kiba in Yuzuka, hey, called. Kiba smiled as he jumped down. Ino smiled also as she jumped down. Listen dog breath, I am going to win this fight, Ino told him. Kiba smirked as he set Akamaru down. Thus try it you damn flower loving fish, Kiba said to her. Knowing Naruto's memories Kiba saw that Ino was one of the main reasons Sasuke abandoned Kiba and left him to die. Knowing that pissed Kiba off to no end as he looked at her. Hajim, hey, said to them. Kiba smiled as he charged Ino. Ino managed to dodge Kiba's charge, but he was too fast and grazed her shoulder. Kiba smirked as he let out some smoke bombs. Ino coughed as she tried to see in the smoke. You hiding Kiba? Ino teased. Kiba scoffed. Not really, G-A-T-S-U-U-G-A fang over fang, Kiba shouted as he and Akamaru teared up the smoke and Ino inside. Everyone waited for the smoke to clear as they saw a battered Ino on the ground. 
Kiba smiled as he picked her up by the collar. Maybe you will think before abandoning me, he said as he tossed her to Heid. Winner. Kiba and Yuzuka, Hei coughed. The board lit up again. Naruto Yuzumaki vs Dozu, Hei said. Naruto smiled as he looked at a trembling Dozu. Dozu couldn't handle the pressure or the fear and called to the proctor. Proctor I give up, Dozu said to him. Everyone wondered why he would give up. Hei looked at him suspiciously, but nodded. Winner. Naruto Yuzumaki, Hei said to them. Naruto nodded as he stayed back on the railing. Well that was anticlimactic, Naruto said to them. Everyone nodded as they looked at the board. Next match. Niji Hyuka vs Hinata Hyuka, Hei said to them. Both went down as they faced each other. You are a loser and you always will be a loser, you cannot change that, Niji told her. Hinata smiled with a sudden brim of confidence as she activated her Byakugan. Then you shouldn't have much to worry about Niji Nai-san, Hinata said as she charged him. Niji smiled as used his Byakugan also. Both went through a series of air palms as blue chakra blowed out of their hands as they tried to strike the other. Niji cursed for not being able to beat Hinata faster. Damn, how can she move so fluently? Niji wondered. Hinata shot forward as she managed to strike Niji in the shoulder. Niji cursed as he jumped back and gripped his shoulder. Damn it, he said. Hinata smirked. What's wrong Nai-san, you look like you are having some trouble, Hinata told him. Shut up, you are a failure, Niji said as Hinata disappeared. Naruto and his group gasped. Hinata was never that strong, in fact it took her three years to attain that speed, Naruto told them. Everyone turned to him in disbelief as they looked back at the match. Hinata reappeared behind Niji as she began to spin. Niji countered her move with his own as they collied and yelled. Payton, they yelled as their opposite techniques clashed and exploded the arena. Everyone covered their eyes as the smoke settled down. Everyone saw Hinata standing over an unconscious Niji. Looks like you fail a Niji Nai-san, Hinata said to him. Hayat stood up over Niji. Winner. Hinata Hyuka, Hayat said. Hinata smiled as she walked back to the balcony. Naruto walked up to her. Nice job Hinata-chan, Naruto told her. Hinata suddenly blushed seeing his face and looked down. Thank you Naruto-kun, Hinata said as she squirmed back to her group. Hayat sighed. Next match. Kankuro vs Shino, he yelled. Kankuro cursed his luck and looked at the proctor. Proctor I give up, he said him. Hei coughed. What is with all of the forfeits today he wondered. Winner. Shino Aburami, Hei said to the bug user. Shino looked unenthusiastic as he laid back in depression. Hinata smiled as she went to comfort Shino. Last match. Sabaku no Gara vs Rock Lee, Hei called out. Lee smiled as he jumped off the railing. Gara smiled as he shunshined in the sand. Hajim, he said to them. Lee charged Gara and attempted a kick, but it was blocked by a wall of sand as Gara stood still. Lee smiled as she tried to bypass the hand, but to no avail. Lee was getting frustrated as he saw his attack were of no use. Gara used his sand to sweep Lee of his feet and propelled him into a wall. Lee smiled as he climbed out of the concrete. Sorry guy sensei, Lee said as he took of his weights. The weights made a loud crash as they came down. Lee smiled. Ah finally, now the fun can begin, Lee said as he disappeared. Gara widened his eyes as he heard an impact behind him. He turned, but saw nothing. Then he heard a crash to the side, he still saw nothing but green blurs. Gara was sent across the field as Lee managed to connect a punch to Gara's face. Gara made a crazy look at he smiled. Yes this is what it means to be alive, Gara said to Lee. Gara's sand covered the area as Lee managed to dodge the strikes. Gara was feeling more and more thrilled as his sand went over the arena. Lee managed to disappear again as he kicked Gara into the air. Gara gasped as Lee pushed him higher and higher away from his sand. Lee wrapped his cloths around Gara as he began to spin. Ahmed Ari NG Primary Lotus, he yelled as he and Gara spiraled down. They hit the sand as Lee struggled to stand. Gara was seen with cracks on his face as he began to pound Lee with his sand. Lee now knew he would lose if he didn't use it. Lee sighed as he charged his chakra. Lee's body began to change as his muscles tightened and his skin turned red. Lee looked at Gara and disappeared. This is my power, with this I will win, Lee said as he slammed Gara in the back and disappeared. Lee began this process until the two were in the air with Gara getting his ass handed to him by the green beast. Gara seethed as he knew he couldn't defend against such speed. Lee smiled as he slammed his foot into Gara's stomach. Vera Ari NG hidden lotus, he yelled as they slammed into the ground, causing a massive explosion. Lee couldn't even stand as he looked at Gara. Gara looked at him and stretched his hand out. Soon the sand went to get Lee as it surrounded his body. Lee cursed as he tried to get away but couldn't. Gara's sand went at him and crushed Lee's arm and leg. Lee yelled in pain as he fell over unconscious. Gara got up and breathed hard, then walked away. Winner. Gara, hate said as the prelims ended. Saratobi came up to the remains people. 
Oh right great job everyone, we will have your final matches in a month, so work hard, and here is the roster, he said as he posted it to a wall. Naruto Uzumaki vs Shino Aburami. Anata Hyuka vs Shizune Kato. In vs Haku. Tsubaku no Tamari vs Kiba Inuzuka. Tsubaku no Gara vs Sasuke Chia. This is the list for next month, train hard and you will achieve greatness, Saratobi said as he walked off. After Naruto and his group looked at the list, everyone shunshined to go home. Chapter End. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.